The Chincha Islands War was a series of coastal and naval battles between Spain and its former colonies of Peru and Chile from 1864 to 1866. The conflict began with Spain's seizure of the guano-rich Chincha Islands in one of a series of attempts by Spain, under Isabella II, to reassert its influence over its former South American colonies. The war saw the use of ironclads, including the Spanish ship New Mancha, the first ironclad to circumnavigate the world. Background Military expenditure greatly increased during Isabella's reign, and as a consequence, Spain rose to a position as the world's fourth naval power. Spain engaged in colonial adventures in the 1850s and 1860s in regions as disparate as Morocco, Indochina, Mexico, and the Dominican Republic. At the end of 1862, Spain sent a scientific expedition to South American waters with the covert purpose of reinforcing the financial and legal claims of Spanish citizens residing in the Americas. The expedition was under the command of Admiral Luis Hernández Pinzón, a direct descendant of the Pinzón brothers who had accompanied Christopher Columbus on his voyage that resulted in the modern European discovery of America. Pinzón's squadron was composed of four warships the twin steam frigates Triumph and Resolution, the corvette Vencedora and the schooner Virgin de Covadonga. The Spanish ships arrived at the port of Valparaiso, Chile on April 18, 1863. Spain had recognized Chilean independence since the 1840s, and the nations had maintained diplomatic relations. The expedition was cordially received, and the admiral exchanged visits with local authorities. The vessels left Chile in July amicably and moved on to Peru. Even though Spain had never recognized Peruvian independence, the squadron received a friendly welcome at the port of Callao. They stayed in port for a few weeks and then sailed, bound for San Francisco, California. Talambo Incident on August 4, 1863, an incident took place at the Talambo Hacienda, in Lambayeque, Peru. The details are fragmentary, however, the episode involved a fight that broke out between two Spaniard residents and 40 local citizens. As a result, one Spaniard died and four others were injured. When news of the incident reached Admiral Pinzón, he returned with his fleet to Peru on November 13 and demanded that the government issue an apology and reparations be made to the affected Spanish nationals. In response, the Peruvians took the position that the episode was an internal police matter better handled by the Peruvian justice system and that no apology was due. At this juncture, the Spanish government in Madrid decided to also demand payment of Peruvian debts stemming from the War of Independence, and it sent Deputy Eusebio de Salazar y Mazaredo to settle the issue directly with the Peruvian authorities. Salazar arrived in March 1864, bearing the title of Royal Commissary. This was a deliberate insult to the government of Peru, because a commissary is a colonial functionary, rather than an ambassador. The snub doomed negotiations with the Peruvian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Juan A. Ribeiro, to failure. Chincha Island's Occupation on April 14, 1864, in retaliation for Peru's refusal to pay an indemnity, the Spanish fleet seized the lightly defended Chincha Islands. The islands were the principal source for Peruvian guano resources. The Spanish placed the island's Peruvian governor Ramon Valerista under arrest aboard the resolution, occupied the islands with 400 marines, and raised the Spanish flag. Spain considered these islands an important bargaining tool, as they were a major Peruvian economic asset and produced almost 60% of the government's annual revenue. The Spanish squadron also blockaded principal Peruvian ports, disrupting commerce and fostering a high level of resentment throughout Latin America. 
Spain expected little resistance from Peru, believing its military capabilities to be negligible. A proposal to exchange the islands for British held Gibraltar was even entertained for a time. During this blockade, the Spanish lost the Triumph 4 after it was destroyed by an accidental fire. The recently named Spanish Prime Minister, Ramón María Narváez disapproved of the unilateral actions taken by Admiral Pinzón and replaced him with Vice Admiral Juan Manuel Pereja, formerly Minister of the Navy. Admiral Pereja had been born in Peru, and his father, Brigadier Antonio Pereja, had died in Chile in 1813 while fighting for Spain during the Chilean War of Independence. Narvaez's conciliatory opinion soon changed, and he dispatched another four warships to reinforce the Pacific fleet. Admiral Pereja arrived in Peru in December 1864 and immediately opened negotiations with General Manuel Ignacio de Vivanco, the special representative of Peruvian President Juan Antonio Peze. The Vivanco Pereja Treaty was signed on January 27, 1865, on board the frigate Villa de Madrid. Peruvian popular opinion considered the treaty as detrimental to Peru's national honor. When the Peruvian Congress refused to ratify it, a general uprising followed and the government of General Peze fell on November 7. War with Chile. In the meantime, anti Spanish sentiments in several South American countries increased. It was obvious to most observers that Spain had no intention of retaking its former colonies. However, Peru and its neighbors still remained wary of any moves that might foreshadow an attempt to re-establish the Spanish Empire. Given the climate of suspicion, no one was surprised when the Spanish gunboat Vencedora stopped at a Chilean port for coal and President José Joaquín Pérez declared that coal was a war supply that could not be sold to a belligerent nation. From the Spanish point of view, the Chilean coaling embargo was taken as proof that Chile no longer was neutral. This was reinforced after two Peruvian steamers left the port of Valparaiso bearing weapons and Chilean volunteers bound for Peru. Vice Admiral José Manuel Pereja consequently took a hard line and demanded sanctions against Chile that were even heavier than those imposed upon Peru. He then detached four wooden ships from his squadron and dispatched them to Chile, while the new Mancha and the Covadonga remained to guard Callao. Admiral Pereja arrived at Valparaiso on September 17, 1865 aboard his flagship the Villa de Madrid. He demanded that the Spanish flag be given a 21-gun salute. He deliberately presented his demand on the day before Chilean National Day. Under the circumstances, the Chileans refused, and war was declared a week later on September 24. The newly named Spanish Prime Minister Leopoldo O'Donnell ordered Admiral Pereja to withdraw, but the Spanish Admiral chose to ignore the direct order. As he had no troops with which to attempt a landing, he decided to impose a blockade of the main Chilean ports. This action was unenforceable, since a blockade of Chile's 1,800 miles of coastline would have required a fleet several times larger than what Pereja had at his disposal. The blockade of the port of Valparaiso, however, caused such great economic damage to both Chilean and foreign interests that the navies of the United States and the United Kingdom, which remained neutral, nevertheless issued a formal protest. Naval Battle of Papudo Even before Chile and Peru were formally allied, Spain had suffered a humiliating naval defeat at the Naval Battle of Papudo on November 26, 1865. During this engagement, the Chilean corvette Esmeralda captured the Spanish schooner Covadonga taking the crew prisoner and seizing the Admiral's war correspondence. This humiliation was too much for Admiral Pereja, and he committed suicide two days later aboard his flagship. Following the Admiral's death, the general command of the Spanish fleet in the Pacific was assumed by Commodore Castamende Núñez. 
who quickly received a promotion to Rear Admiral, war with Peru, Ecuador and Bolivia, on November 7, 1865, due to his unwillingness to declare war on Spain and vilification arising from his signing of the Vivanco Pereja Treaty. Peruvian President Juan Antonio Peze was forced out of office. He was replaced by his vice president, General Pedro Diaz Cansco. General Diaz Cansco also tried to avoid war with Spain, and that similarly led to his downfall only 20 days later. On November 26, General Mariano Ignacio Prado, leader of the nationalist movement, deposed Cansco. The new government immediately declared its solidarity with Chile and its intention to declare war on Spain and to restore Peru's national honor. Chile and Peru formally signed an alliance against Spain on December 5, 1865. The Peruvian Congress ratified this alliance on January 12, and two days later, Peru finally declared war on Spain. Chile's navy was weak, almost non-existent. To reinforce its Chilean ally, a Peruvian squadron under the command of Captain Lizard Montero was immediately dispatched to the south. Among the ships in the squadron were the steam frigates Amazonas and Apurimac. Ecuador joined the alliance on January 30, 1866 by declaring war on Spain that same day. Bolivia, under the command of General Mariano Melgarejo, also declared war on March 22, 1866. These moves resulted in all the ports on South America's Pacific coast becoming close to the Spanish fleet. Argentina and Brazil refused to join the alliance, as they were embroiled in a war with Paraguay. Naval Battle of Abteo Spain's Admiral Mendez Núñez sent two of his most powerful ships south to destroy the combined Chilean-Peruvian fleet. The Allied squadron had been placed under the command of Peruvian Captain Manuel Villa and had taken refuge at Abteo, a well-protected inlet near the Gulf of Chiloé in southern Chile. The Spanish squadron appeared at the entrance of the inlet on February 7, 1866, but the Spanish did not enter as they did not want to risk their ironclads running aground in the Chalios. A cannonade lasting several hours was exchanged with little effect. In spite of being at anchor, without steam, and with some ships with their engines undergoing overhaul, the Allies mounted an energetic fight. The Covadonga, under the command of Lieutenant Manuel Thompson, managed to fire over an island and scored several hits on the frigate Blanca. The battle ended indecisively without further developments. Reluctant to enter shallow waters and realizing that a long-range gun duel served no purpose but to waste ammunition, the Spanish commanders withdrew. Williams and the Esmeralda were not at the anchorage on the day of the battle. The Commodore had sailed to Ancud for coaling. On its way back to Valparaiso, the Spanish squadron captured a Chilean steamboat that was transporting sailors to crew the new Peruvian ironclads for Scar and Independencia. Bombardment of Valparaiso The Spanish could not attack land forces, and they had been frustrated in attempts to engage the Allied squadron at sea. The Spanish ships were isolated, short of supplies and losing hope of victory. When the Chilean government ordered that all vessels communicating with the Spanish fleet should be barred from Chilean ports, Admiral Mendez Núñez decided to take punitive actions against the Allied ports. The Spanish fleet shelled and burned the town and port of Valparaiso on March 31, and destroyed Chile's merchant fleet. All told, 33 vessels were burned or sunk. The damage to the Chilean merchant marine was catastrophic. Twelve years later, the total tonnage under the Chilean flag was still less than half of what it had been in 1865. Battle of Callao Admiral Mendez Núñez Displeased at having to resort to destroying defenseless targets such as Valparaiso and with the inconclusive result at Abteo, decided to change tactics and attack a heavily defended port. As a result, the Admiral set sail for the Peruvian port city of Callao. The Battle of Callao took place on May 2. After the battle, both sides claimed victory. 
Peruvian defenders claimed that they had halted the Spanish from regaining their lost authority and prestige in South America, prevented them from enforcing their demands upon Peru and to have forced the withdrawal of the Spanish fleet. The Spanish claimed to have visited punishment upon its former colony. Spanish guns had managed to cause only limited damage to defenses, and most of the cannons and artillery survived the battle intact. Aftermath Whether the suspicions of a Spanish scheme to recapture its former colonies had any basis in fact is unknown. Many in South America saw Spain's meddling in Latin America and its occupation of the Chincha Islands as proof of a long-range Spanish plot to reassert its influence over its previous colonial territories. The force sent by Spain, on the other hand, amounted to a mere squadron of ships with negligible capabilities for landing forces and the intention may have only been to seize the islands for their valuable fertilizer resources as reparations and to regain some of Spain's lost prestige. Regardless of the reason behind the conflict, Spain found it impossible to hold their positions, with all ports south of Colombia closed to them for coaling and provisioning. The Spanish fleet withdrew from patrolling the South American coastline, vacated the Chincha Islands and returned to Spain via the Philippines, completing a circumnavigation of the globe in order to do so. Order of Battle Spain General Commanders Vice Admiral Luis Hernandez Pinzón, Vice Admiral José Manuel Pereja, Rear Admiral Castamende Núñez, Steam schooners Vencedora, built 1861, weight 778 tons, speed 8 knots, weapons 2 200mm revolving guns and two 160mm guns. Virgin de Covadonga, built 1864, weight 445 tons, speed 8 knots, weapons 2 revolving 200mm guns at the sides and 1 revolving 160mm guns at the prow. Captured by Chile at Battle of Papido on November 26, 1865, steamboats Marques de la Victoria 3 guns. Sail transports Consuelo, Mataura, Peru General Commanders Captain Lizarde Montero, Captain Manuel Villa, Screw Frigate Sapuramac, built 1854, weight 1,666 tons, speed 9.43 knots, weapons 34 guns. Amazonas, built 1851, weight 1,743 tons, speed 9.43 knots, weapons 33 200mm guns, beach to Tabteo, near Punta Quilk, 15 January 1886. Steam schooners Tumas, built 1854, weight 250 tons, speed 7 knots, weapons 268 pounder guns. Steamboats Chalico, built 1864-2 guns, Colon, built 1864-2 guns, Ironclad Monitors Low, built 1854, conversion to ironclad ordered in 1864, weight 648 tons, speed 10 knots, weapons 432 PDR, guns, Victoria, built 1865, one gun, Chile General Commanders Captain Juan Williams Reboledo, Corvette Esmeralda, built in 1854, 854-ton weight, speed of 8 knots, armed with two guns bow 12 pounds, 16 smoothbore muzzle loading guns are 32 pounds and 4 smoothbore muzzle loading guns are 32 pounds. Steam schooners Virgin de Covadonga, built 1864, weight 445 tons, speed 8 knots, weapons, two revolving 200mm guns at the sides and one revolving 160mm guns at the prow. Captured by Chile at Battle of Papido on November 26, 1865, transports Paquita del Mall, captured by Spain, speed 13 knots, armament 2 guns, steamers Maipu, built 1855 in England, acquired 1857, displacement 450 tons, speed 8 knots, armed with 168 pounds gun and 432 pounds guns.
Lao Taro built 1852, given by Peru to Chile for wartime use 1865, displacement 450 tons.